Oh yeah, baby. So why am I showing off my little but still pretty cool Sega Genesis collection? <laughs> if you go to a store right now, you can actually purchase a Sega Genesis Mini with 42 games on it. Yeah, you can play Sega Genesis games on the PlayStation 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're going to play on 5 and 6 ones too, <laughs> whenever they come out. There are like so many different collections, you know, mini consoles out there. So why should we get excited about a new Sega Genesis Mini? Oh, look at the size of this. Yeah, I can barely lift it. And then you get something small like this. It's so tiny. Oh my god. <laughs> my head is actually bigger than the Sega Genesis Mini. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, yeah, truth be told, I almost missed buying this system because I was expecting a big box like this and I was looking all over a store to see where the Sega Genesis Mini was, but <laughs> it was so tiny, yeah, <laughs> I nearly missed the darn thing. Yeah, look at all the games on here. Just an awesome looking package. So not only do you get 40 Sega Genesis and Mega Drive releases here, but you also get two bonus games that weren't released you know, initially. Yeah. Duris, the original Duris, found in the arcades, and Tetris. This one gives you two free button controllers, but at least the cord is a very nice link. You know, this goes all over the place. Whoa! <laughs> but you gotta be careful because, yeah, that mini there is pretty light. In fact, let me put the camera down. So here it is right now. That's a real Sega Genesis. And this is the Mini. Very sleek, stylish. You know, you got a whole bunch of different buttons on it. You can even open the door, but of course you can't actually put any games inside it. Yeah. Let's see Michael Jackson on the mini but <laughs> that's as close as a Michael Jackson's game is going to be on the mini because no way that's going to fit in there no Michael Jackson can't violate this system <laughs> oh, I better be careful I don't want to get sued again it even has the original high definition graphics on there even though I think Sega had to take them out the later Sega Genesis models because it's not true high-definition graphics. It's just way better than original Nintendo. <laughs> and yeah, let's look at all those awesome games. <laughs> well, most of them are awesome. You can select you know, your different languages. Yeah, and then go in the top corner here. Let's go to settings. Yeah. Now this is a very cool feature because you go to languages. Okay. Let's go to the original Mega Drive Japanese versions. And it loads up the list of all 42 games, but now you get the original, very sexy Japanese artwork. Sometimes it's not too different from the North American ones, but you do get, yeah, some odd changes. Like Gonads, that's way different. Strider looks way better. Palms, you know, pretty exciting. Yeah, and some games even get like a name change, like this game here, yeah, is supposed to be Dr. Robot and it's me, me machine, but now it starts some 300 pound woman or something. It's called Payu Payu. Okay. Another cool thing I should mention is that when you play these games, it's actually the Japanese version. Here, I'll show you. Because here's a game that's called Contra Hardcore over here in the States or in Canada or Mexico, whatever. Now, yeah, it's still Contra, you're still jumping and shooting, you can pick us four different characters, just like the North American original, but you notice there, I took a hit and I didn't die. No, you have a health bar up there. That's awesome. <laughs> Why was this taken out of the North American version? Well, this game is actually very fun now. Okay, but enough of, you know, showing you the Japanese version of Contra. If you just want to go to a different game, or check out like the different menus, or even save your game, just hold down the start button for about 5 seconds. This menu will pop up, 
Yeah, you can do a whole bunch of options that are exclusive to this little mini here. Here is Castlevania Bloodlines, but in different countries it's either called Vampire Killer or Castlevania The New Generation. Castlevania New Generation. Or what the hell they're calling it, I don't know. And in Alex Kid, you know, a very E-rated game you would think, actually has some nudity in it. <laughs> yeah, when you go to the Jagan matches, either Alex Kid or your opponents, they strip down. <laughs> You don't see anything too major, you know, they're all covered up minorly, but instead of having like a big one ton weight actually fall on them, no, you actually see them bared down to their essentials and they're all embarrassed. <laughs> and whatever. Strider, when he uses his sword, he keeps on yelling a lot. <laughs> I'm glad they changed that out of the North American version. And just little changes like that. Oh yeah, you gotta love Alicia Dragoon's Japanese artwork, very cool. Yeah, you can do French, Italian, German, Spanish, traditional Chinese, and even Korean. Yeah, and each one might have some subtle differences between regions. Yeah, let me show you one of the new games, Darius. It's nothing new to me. I play this a lot on the PC Engine and it's awesome. But this is the big game, a big exclusive that's part of the mini lineup. A never before seen game here on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, so it's pretty much just like the arcade game. But of course, it's not in its traditional 48 by 9 aspect ratio, no. Everything is sort of zoomed in. <laughs> You're not dealing with free monitors here, no. Just one. It's probably one of the few games in here that you actually want to switch to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But, I don't know, you do you. <laughs> yeah, you can set up your screens, add some wallpaper, who cares, I just go black. Because once you go black, you never go back. Yeah, you just have a whole bunch of great games. But sadly, yeah, here we have Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition and the Turtle Champions. The problem is, yeah, the Sega Genesis Mini gives you two free button controllers, uh, not the six button one. So if you want to play these games right, <laughs> get a six button controller. It's nice that they're on here and they're very good games, especially Street Fighter 2 and not so much the Turtle Champion. If you want further reviews on them, I think I reviewed them like on my channel. If you go to my Sega Genesis playlist, yeah, I reviewed a lot of these great games already. Shinobi 3, awesome. Gunstar Heroes, friggin' amazing. And yes, <laughs> I am your current reigning defending Gunstar Heroes world champion, Ryan Geno, baby. Yeah, <laughs> look at my top score compared to everybody else. I'm sorry, you know, Matthew and Pete. That just goes to show you how much I love Gunstar Heroes. Sadly, yeah, even though I got like a world record on that game, I got no review copy. No, I had to go to Walmart and buy the system myself. <laughs> so Sega, you better appreciate this freaking review. Happy Console Gamer and GameSat, you know, they got like special you know, free systems, and they even got like special toys where you can put a fake Virtuettes and Sega CD on there. <laughs> I get jack shit! But hey, another game I got a world record in, Dynamite Heady, is on here. So you get some nice obscure titles in with some, you know, Sega Genesis mainstays like Sonic 1 and 2. Oddly enough, not Sonic 3. Like Streets of Rage 2, I played this one so many times, but <laughs> you've got to include it on the mini. <laughs> In my opinion, Streets of Rage 2 is the best sit scene bit beat em up ever made. Yeah, it's Bedman Turtles 4. Eh, World of Illusion, it's okay. Kind of slow though. Shining Force, awesome tactical RPG. Yeah, the Fantasy Star series, you know, gets a bad rap. But at least with part 4 here, it feels a little bit faster compared to some of its contemporaries. So you got some nice gameplay mixed in with 24 megabytes of action. A great list of characters play us. Very fun RPG. 
Virtual Fighter 2 is great with a free button controller. The problem is, it's Virtual Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis, and it kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, and come to think of it, yeah, Virtual Fighter 2 is not really Virtual Fighter 2 because you only get the eight original characters with their new moves. But you don't get to play as the new characters like Leon and Shundi. And it's all 2D, it's very hard to control. Just a bad game. Void it. But Vetterman, yeah, this could be almost like a 32 bit game with the malographical detail in it. Oh, yeah, and the controls feel great on this system. I heard some people, you know, they reported like maybe a little bit of lag or maybe some minor graphical and sound issues. But for me, it feels just like a Sega Genesis that I have right over here. And believe me, I played a lot of Sega Genesis over the years. <laughs> like, look at the visuals here. That's some detail in the flags. Amazing detail in the background, foreground. That demand is just awesome. <laughs> okay, the gameplay is kind of generic, but hey, it works. Definitely a later Sega Genesis release, and it shows. Yeah, another game I like seeing in here is Mega Man The Wily Wars. Yeah, if you haven't seen my review yet, I love this game, and it's awesome to see this on the mini. So more people can experience this lineup. Yeah, now do I have any problems? Well, yeah, maybe a few because <laughs> you get a lot of games on here that you're probably not gonna like, like Space Harrier 2. How awesome would it have been to have like the 32X version of Space Harrier on here because even though this is a sequel to Space Harrier, it's not as good as the original. And the one on the 32X runs so much better. But do we get the 32X version? No. Yeah, the same with uh, Alter Beast and Alex Kid because even though they're kind of iconic titles, they're probably not the best games that really show off the power of the Genesis. Well, Alter Beast, it looks nice at first. You know, you're playing two players, you can transform into cool different animals. But then you realize, oh crap, I'm already done the game because there's only five levels to it. <laughs> I think you can beat Alter Beast in like 10 minutes. <laughs> and Out's Kid, yeah, the gameplay definitely is very all the day compared to something like a Sonic, which is so accessible. You know, the controls are kind of clunky. It can be fun in spurts, but uh, you're definitely going to have more fun with games like From the Force 3. Yeah, Castle of Illusion, and yes, Peter Lucas, Strider is awesome. Come on, what were you thinking? 4.5? No way! Thinking more like 8.5. Johnny Millennium is right. Strider is freaking cool. Play it for a bit. See those awesome graphics. Get used to those controls. Yeah, they're a little bit stiff, but Strider is still amazing. That, let's go Strider right now. Yeah, I'm going to play some Strider, and I'm going to enjoy myself. Because it's a freaking amazing 8 megabit game. <laughs> See, I'm having no problem stabbing people, you know, jumping around. It's very fun. You got very cool backgrounds, very cool gameplay. There's lots of different weapons and power ups you can collect. The stages are very interesting and very interactive. Oh, there's just so much style to this game. Give it a chance. You'll love it. Strider is freaking amazing. That's somersault. Yeah, and kill this big Russian dude. See, I'll even give you a tip here. Stand right here. You'll avoid the fire. <laughs> and yes, I got a world record on Strider too. At least in the PAL region. <laughs> I wasn't able to touch a North American one. I, yeah, look at that amount of detail here. You can see, yeah, why they need the full 8 megabits here to really do a game like this. It's short, but damn, is it fun. Oh yeah, and I love this boss here. This is just the first level, and it's freaking amazing. 
So if you want to save your game, just hit the A button here. And boom, there you go. And certain games like Mega Man The Wily Wars and Monster World 4, yeah. Those games have built-in save features initially, and you don't even have to use save slots. No, nope. it'll save automatically if you use the save feature in those games themselves. So yeah, you don't have to worry about using a save system. Yeah, initially games like Strider and Alex Kid didn't have a save system, but here on the Mini, yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, so I just have a few minor problems. I would gladly trade in a few of these games for like a few other Sega Genesis titles, like, you know, Moonwalker there, <laughs> Sagaya, Trutzen, and a few other classics because <laughs> it's great that we have 42 games in here, but it's just like the other minis I have here, like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo ones are collecting dust because even though everybody loved these systems when they first came out, once you played all the games on them, you're done. And unless you're a good hacker and everything, which I'm not, it's great that you get to play like the different regions of them. So that opens up like more options to you. So you're really getting like eight times the amount of games now. If you compare it to like the different regions, the different you know changes that one game might have over another, that makes it much more appealing than the Nintendo ones here, believe it or not. Yeah, the Nintendo ones are iconic, but they definitely get boring after a while. Where this one, I can have like a lot of fun with it. See the nudity and outs kid. <laughs> See the different changes that they made for Vampire Killer or <laughs> Castlevania. It's great to have a Tetris game finally on one of these minis. It's too bad that it kind of sucks like I'm playing bad here but the controls feel a little bit stiff like I hit the button to actually rotate one of the pieces at the top but it actually didn't rotate for me I had to press a button again to do it and this one plays more like an arcade game so even if you set that to its lowest difficulty it speeds up pretty quickly no matter what and it just doesn't feel as fun as the original Nintendo Tetris is out there. But the problem is that Nintendo ones aren't on the Mini, <laughs> where this one is. Sega went above and beyond to get themselves like a great lineup of games on here. And yeah, it's just cool to see this game finally in action. I heard rumors of it, how it's supposed to be released on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive way back when, but of course, <laughs> Nintendo put the kibosh on that when they actually went to Russia to actually get the full rights to do a console release. It's confusing, but uh, now in this day and age, you can pretty much release Tetris on anything you want if you got the cash. Yeah, I don't even know if it's like the full Mega Drive version or the arcade release. It feels more like an arcade game where the Mega Drive release was supposed to be a little bit more flushed out. But either way, yeah, it's Tetris. It's good, but not great. Yeah, not the most fun out there. But I actually recognize the background music here being from, the, yeah, the Sega Master System version of Columns. So I thought that was kind of cool. There's at least going to be one game that you're going to like for sure. Like, you can't go wrong with games like Streets of Rage 2, you know, Wonder Force 3, Castle of Illusion, yeah. It's so nice getting Disney games on here. It would have been nice to get Quatshot and Aladdin as well, but <laughs> I'm still surprised that we got Castle of Illusion because Disney, they're usually so strict. Yeah, let me see if I can wipe the dust off these, oh my god. Even though there are great Disney games on the Nintendo ones, we didn't get them on the Mini. So that's why I think a lot of people don't really care about these minis no more. <laughs> yeah, if you want to put drinks on your you know, minis on here, yeah, the Nintendo one is great for your beer. Awesome coasters. <laughs> but yeah, that brings me to the problem with, you know, the Sega Genesis mini is that, yeah, once you're done with all these games here, 
yeah, you might be kind of sick, but you might want to play at her once, like Streets of Rage 3, maybe like a different Road Rash, the original or the third one. But yeah, you can't, you gotta get a real Sega Genesis. So it's hard to recommend that you get the mini over a real Genesis. But how are you gonna find these in the store anymore? No. I had to go to like a Doug and say, hey, can you sell me this for a few bucks? He said, sure. Here you can just go to like a, any store and boom, it was right there. And yeah, it wasn't even that hard to find. You know, Jason was telling me, oh, these are really hard to get, so I'm going to get one. But <laughs> I just went to like the first store <laughs> out there and yeah, they had like nine copies of it. It was very easy to get. I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find one of these two, no problem. It's not going to be like, you know, the original Nintendo one where they only release one copy in each city and that's it. Or it's not going to be like the Toriyasu Z Mini when that comes out when it's not even supposed to be released here in Canada. No. Sega, they know these systems will sell. <laughs> so you're going to see buttloads of them everywhere. But should you get it? Yeah, this is actually your first time playing some of these classes like Monster World 4 here. Yeah, starting this Hello Arabian Girl. Very fun game. Yeah, because if you buy some of these games on your own, yeah, it's going to be very expensive. Games like Alicia Dragoon, Mega Man The Wild Wars, yeah, and Contra Hardcore, I know are very expensive games if you get them complete with case, both and everything. It's going to cost over 100 for those games alone. But here on the Mini, yeah, the Mini itself is just $100. 42 games, the ability to play in 8 different languages, some actual different alterations of key games that you see on here. It's an awesome package. I give the Sega Genesis Mini here, yeah, not the At Games one, but this one right here. <laughs> Don't buy the wrong one. No, oh, no. I give it an 82 out of 100. Yeah, the problem is you're stuck with these games and that's it. Man, you're missing so much in here because the Sega Genesis is known for, you know, great games like John Man Football, some early Sega Genesis 3D titles like OutRun, Super Hang On, and <laughs> so many cool shooters that should have been on this list. I heard the Japanese one got Musha, but we didn't. Maybe put in Thunder Force 4 or Lightning in Force or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> but still, as it is, I can't complain too much. I'm going to get back to some major nostalgia, play these games again, and see if I still got the skills to pay the bills. And that's it for me. This is Airsoft World Heavyweight Champion, over and out. See, this is Thunder Force 3 and it's awesome. Yeah! Okay, just as awesome as a Michael Sturry Hero World Record. Sorry, I just have to show that off.